Hey guys, it's Chris with Nichols Retirement Empire. Today I'm doing my final video about best advice to teachers. Um, I'm going to have three things I'm going to talk to you about today. And this applies especially to new teachers, or if you're an older teacher, it applies to you too if it's something that you've never heard before. So let's dive into these. But the first thing that you need to do when you're going to a school, you're going to a new school district, uh, or if you're in a school and you're not aware of this, you need to learn as much as you can about the discipline code and how it works. Uh, it's going to help you out a lot. It's gonna help you alleviate a lot of stress. Uh, it's gonna help you understand what's going on if you do get into a situation where you have a student that is a severe discipline issue and maybe they are, um, a special ed student and there's all kind of you know different processes that, that, that have to go through in their discipline uh, it may be that you have a student that has uh, chronic discipline issues and you may be under the impression that discipline works a certain way in your school district and it doesn't work that way so you need to get with your administrator and they'll take time they'll, they'll be glad to do this with you I would get with one of my APs, you know, that maybe is the one that's in charge of the discipline or whatever, and I would just ask them some pointed questions like, you know, what has to happen, for example, this is a good one to ask, what has to happen for a student to be put into 10 days of uh, out of school suspension? And what has to happen for a student to put be put in long term out of school suspension? And the way they answer that question will answer, will help you understand a lot of things that go on in your school as far as the discipline. So ask them questions like that. How does that happen? Ask them questions about, you know, what are some things that I can do as a teacher to discipline the students that don't involve you as an administrator? And if they're a good administrator, they should be able to tell you, well, you can do this, this, and this. And if you do this this way, and you do this that way, and you do this this way, then when it comes to me, I'll be able to help you out. I'll be able to, it'll expedite the discipline process, okay? If you do things a certain way, ask them, okay? And with all your discipline stuff, one of the things that you're gonna learn and, and, and this is not just with discipline, but with anything else, is that you need to be documenting everything. I would document every conversation I had with a teacher, if it involved anything other than just, you know, run of the mill, hey, what's going on today? You know, anything that could possibly ever come into question, I documented, I documented every phone call I made with a parent, uh, anything that made my radar you know, this is weird, I documented it. And I, anything I did with a student, I documented it, okay? So that's part of the di disciplinary process. If you're, if you're good at documentation, if you're good at handling your own business within the discipline code prior to it getting to the administrator, you can get a lot more things done and your, your administrator will be much more responsive and the parents will be much more responsive to the discipline that you use in your classroom, so learn how the discipline code works in your school. Don't ask the other teachers, okay? You need to get it from an administrator's perspective how the discipline code works because they're gonna handle the discipline that comes from you, okay? So don't ask the other teachers, you know, get with an administrator and, and get a good working understanding, not just for your school, but for the whole district. Because there's gonna be things that happen as you teach and you're going to be like, man, what in the world? This kid is just off the chain. And when are they ever going to? It'll answer a lot of questions if you learn, you know, the legal aspects and the, you know, the aspects that the that the school district considers and the, and the administrators consider. So that's one thing of it, piece of advice I would give you. The second thing that you need to have an in-depth understanding of is your observation instrument. Okay. How am I going to get observed and exactly what are they looking for? Now in most states, this is spelled out in tons of detail for you. So I would make sure I looked at that observation instrument and I knew exactly 
what was expected of me because this is what gets people hired and fired okay uh, I make sure you you don't have any questions about how it works how many times you're going to be observed all those things what the scores mean you know again don't ask the other teachers you look at it and you do it and then if you have any questions about it again this is another one of those go to the administrator thing and whoever your observing administrator is before any of the observations start you need to go sit down with them and say okay you know I'm new or I don't have much experience in this uh, when you come in my room how is this going to work and they'll pretty much explain to you okay what we'll do is the first observation is going to be within the first so many days and then I'm going to come in there and I'm going to be looking for these two specific things they'll they'll generally tell you up front what they're looking for because they don't want to surprise you they don't want to put you you know they're not trying it's not a get you kind of thing uh, if they're a good administrator but you need to know learn as much as you can learn about that observation instrument and how to navigate it and don't make it bigger or more complicated than it is but don't overlook it don't just assume that oh this is going to be a piece of cake because it may not be you really need to look at it and, and get a firm understanding and don't have any questions make sure you ask every question if it's a legitimate question that you have about your observation instrument it's about keeping your job and you should never think twice about going to your administrator and saying hey what does this mean like what do I need to do to get a satisfactory score when it says this right here they'll tell you I used to tell mine I would tell them you know look if you want to get a satisfactory score in this and I walk in your room and I see this you're getting a satisfactory score I tell them up front so to ask them and even if they don't like it ask them that's your job you know you you should be able to ask about that third thing is no privacy okay and this one really stinks but you have no privacy as a teacher it's not like it used to be where I could go in my classroom and I could do whatever behind closed doors and it was my word against you know every kid in your classroom has got a phone that where they can record your voice they can record your image they can record they can record everything that's going on in that classroom and you have no idea and I've had students come into my office as an administrator and take out their phone and go, hey, here's what my teacher did. And there have been cases where it was bad. It was something bad their teacher did. And it had been going on and the kid recorded it. And the guy and you know the teacher got caught. Now, is that right? Are the, t are the kids supposed to be? No, they're not supposed to be recording the teachers. But they do. They're going to they're going to so you have to understand you can go on and look on you know YouTube Facebook TikTok, whatever and you're gonna find videos where kids on purpose have tried to do things to get some kind of response out of their teacher so they can put it on social media okay it, you are watched like never before and you just need to understand that and, and I'm telling you right now the public expects teachers to be perfect they don't expect you to ever slip and say a cuss word they don't expect you to ever you know mess up on the roll they don't ever expect you to mess up but they expect you to be a teaching a perfect teaching machine and you know and I know we're gonna mess up sometimes we were humans but but the public is ruthless with, with that and social media is ruthless with that and the kids can be ruthless with that to assume you are on camera all the time that that's how I would approach it today I would assume that I am constantly being recorded constantly being videoed all that stuff just go ahead and assume it and if you get on social media and you get on there and you're like well you know I, I have you know I have a freedom of speech I can say what I want you know yeah you you can but there'll be a you know there'll be a consequence when you you know when you get on there and you say certain things or you do certain things you express certain opinions and even if it's okay you just have to be able to handle the court of public opinion you know you have to be able because everybody else has freedom of speech too 
you know, and you don't want to get on there. I can't tell you how many times I've gone on whatever, Facebook or whatever, and, and a teacher is just getting killed on Facebook over something. And I mean, it's like people have no proof. No, They just get on there and just say whatever, and then it's just, you know, open season on the teacher. So you need to understand when you get on social media and you, and you you know, you you go into teaching, you are under a microscope like never before. So my advice is assume you're being recorded, okay? No privacy, assume you have no privacy. And that includes with your coworkers because you'll be in the break room, you know, jo joking around, about whatever, next thing you know, they're going to the assistant principal or the principal making a complaint because you said, you know, just, just assume you're being recorded all the time. Okay, treat it like that. So, that's my three things today. That's the end of that series, Best Advice for Teachers. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any other specific things, because somebody asked me specifically for that series of, uh, of videos, if you have any other thing that you want me to talk about, if you're a new teacher or whatever, uh, because we're on into school now, you may be seeing some things that you have questions about because you're new. Uh, throw them out there and I'll be glad to address it in some of my videos if I have enough knowledge to address it. So thank you guys for watching and uh, have a good day.